Behind me, you can see the damage made by an RV filled with explosives. And we've seen cars slow down, roll down their windows, take pictures, and their jaw drops. It's no telling what this fire damaged, not just a building, but the impact it has on the community. We're working on all those things right now. Just minutes ago, they took him into custody. We have that video. Take a look. We just received a AP alert saying that the NBA players will continue in the playoffs. But when you looked out your window this morning, you probably didn't see any new snow, but that doesn't mean to let your guard down because some of this ice is developing. Now, right now we are at Adams Motor Company and you can see the windows are busted out. The new year is typically a time to resolve to make changes toward a better you. But chances are you've had to change and adapt quite a bit this past year. Oh, Jenna, Rachel, you had mentioned there is enough snow for a small snowball or maybe if the kids want to come out and make uh, snow angels there is enough snow for that that's right yeah I throw it, it. Yeah. Throw it. <laughs> there we go it was cooler outside but the humidity just it doesn't which help. is not good for my hair no exactly <laughs> it's not that light white christmas snow it's the real heavy see how hard that was to pull oh here. rachel you? <laughs> you think yeah. so oh i know so yeah it's that um discount halloween candy that gets me <laughs> so i think i eat it all at the the same time of the yeah. year. Taj, you talked with some people who were in the mall when this happened. What did they have to say? What's different this year? We saw in the images that Santa has that mask, <laughs> but what else is going on this year that's a little different? <laughs> And that smell may not be as delightful as we'd like, especially after eating that sandwich with extra onions. So Amazement Square wants to see what you can do with this sidewalk chalk. And Jenna, you have one more week to really hone in and practice on those chalk art skills. Turning now to your forecast, we've had a little bit of everything these last few days. Rain, snow, ice, I can go on. <laughs> <laughs> Meteorologist Delaney Worden joins us now. The move means millions of Americans will get direct stimulus payments and extended unemployment benefits. It also prevents a government shutdown. WSLS, this is 10 News, Virginia Today at 6, working for you. This is one of the greatest scientific accomplishments in history. A sign towards the end of the pandemic, when the first vaccination in America will happen. Plus, another stall on the stimulus bill, the Virginia lawmaker who's calling out Congress. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. I'm Megan Woods. And I'm meteorologist Justin McKee. Welcome to the desk this morning, Thank Megan you. McKinley, off this weekend. Yeah. Um, I've actually been out of town the last couple of days, but um, from what I understand, the weather's been pretty nice. Well, yeah, the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. I'm super happy. I didn't have to turn on the heat this morning in my car. Right. And it looks like uh, it's going to be another nice one as we start Yay. off the weekend. So let's get a look outside. Thanks, Justin. A medical miracle. That's what President Donald Trump is calling the FDA's approval of the Pfizer COVID vaccine. He says the first vaccination will take place today. The decision comes a day after a panel of independent experts recommended that the FDA should give the vaccine the green light. The president thanked the scientists and doctors who worked on the vaccine, which he says will help return life back to normal. Within the next few weeks, 20 million Americans could be vaccinated. With the promising news of the vaccine, stimulus talks remain stalled. Congress now has one more week to negotiate a COVID relief bill. Yesterday, the Senate passed a stopgap funding bill to avoid a government shutdown. Senate Democrats are pushing back against COVID relief bill proposals from both the White House and Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Republican Congressman Denver Riggleman is calling out lawmakers in his final weeks in office. He believes there's a chance Congress will pass a deal before the end of the year. But he wants to see help go to businesses and people sooner rather than later. Republican Bob Good will take Riggleman's seat in Virginia's 5th District next year. Riggleman says he's still making a decision about whether to run for governor, but is looking forward to spending more time with his family. The Virginia Education Association is asking superintendents to move to all online learning, but some districts are hesitant. The Roanoke County School Board revealed its fully online middle and high school students are failing at twice the rate of its students learning in person. The VEA believes virtual learning is safer, but Roanoke County leaders say they're in schools, their in-school students are safe because of social distancing guidelines. 
Roanoke County schools will also encourage online students who are failing to return to in-person classes. Frontline workers are now struggling to cope with a record-shattering wave of COVID cases. Two weeks after Thanksgiving, many hospitals are overwhelmed with intensive care units filling up and in some cases at max capacity. Erin McLaughlin explains how the medical field is trying to keep up. In what's news today, enjoy a relaxing, festive Saturday in downtown Roanoke with Santa's workshop, live Zoom calls with Santa, strolling performers, Cactus Joe, choo-choo rides, and farmer's market vendors. It's all part of the 25 days of Dickens. The fun starts at 10 this morning and goes until 2 p.m. Over in Salem, it's time for a shopping adventure from 9 this morning to 4 p.m. It's at the Civic Center. Unique crafters, artists, and direct sales vendors will have just what you need for the perfect gift. This is a free event, but they ask you to bring a non-perishable food item for the Salem Roanoke County Food Pantry. A night to honor our nurses working tirelessly during the pandemic. The Virginia Nurses Foundation's annual gala will be held virtually at 7 tonight. Two local nurses will be honored, Jonathan Phillips of Carillion Roanoke Memorial Hospital and Heather Mayberry of Centra. Busting a move all the way to the Olympics. How you can earn a gold medal by dancing. We all deserve a day to feel special. That's right. And these last nine months, we've had to be super creative in celebrating major milestones. And one Roanoke family found a way to make a birthday, one to remember, even if it's during a pandemic. But they need your help to do it. Oh like most 11-year-olds, birthdays are a big deal for Elijah Toller. I would usually invite mo most of my friends. My mom would bake it, the same cake that she bakes every year. And then we just have a party and do fun stuff. But because of the pandemic, there won't be a party this year. For Elijah, it's a devastating blow to an already rough year. Elijah has autism and learning from home has been extremely difficult for him. So he expressed his frustration the best way he knew how, sending his mother this email. It was heartbreaking and I explained to him that, you know, I understand the way you're feeling, you know, and I'm sorry for that but we can try other things um, than just um, going out for your party. And he still couldn't wrap his head around, I'm not gonna have a birthday party this year. His mother often shares their email conversations on Facebook to help other parents of kids with autism, but this one had a bigger response. People wanted to do a parade and, you know, which would have been good, but Elijah in the month of December is already overstimulated and I didn't want to overstimulate him even more. So um, another friend suggests that they send cards. The perfect idea for a child who loves getting mail. I haven't got mail in a long, long, long time. Especially cards. Especially the musical ones that play the song stuff. And although Elijah is a little shy on how much this means to him, his mom let us in on the secret. He was just jumping up and down and he was like super excited. He was like, really, mom? Really? And I was like, yeah, really? And he, he just was overjoyed and uh, super excited about the whole situation. And he's been running to the mailbox checking even though his birthday's not here yet. <laughs> Elijah's birthday is December 30th, and if you want to make him feel special and warm this family's heart, visit WSLS.com later this morning for their P.O. box. This pandemic and everything that's come with it has been hard to deal with, especially for families with children with autism. One major resource in the community is sharing how to make it easier coming up in the next half hour. The message is in the name, Docs for Morgan. Since 2013, it's been Carillion Clinic Physicians versus Virginia Tech Carillion Medical Students. It's more than just for bragging rights, but to honor Morgan Harrington. Before her disappearance and murder more than 10 years ago, she was studying to become a teacher. We uh, always say that the summer that she uh, worked in the medical school and, and worked with me was our magical summer. Instead of dribbling down the court like in years past, doctors and medical students are picking up a PlayStation controller. This is a time for those groups, school, Carillion, and community to come together and show that really the goodness of people 
overcomes the evil of tragedy. Morgan's mother, Jill, says this scholarship is her family's way of saying thank you after what she calls a tsunami of love and support. We are able to return healers to the community. To be exact, nine healers and $400,000 over the years, all in their daughter's name. Uh, she's actually, through the scholarship, uh, educated more people than she ever, probably ever would, you know, when all this is said and done. This isn't just about remembering Morgan, but bringing a little bit of her light back. The community, the world at large, was robbed of the great potential that she had. And through um, efforts like Docs for Morgan, we are able to actualize and realize some of the goodness that she would have brought to the world. Megan Woods, 10 News, working for you. This week, 34 Roanoke Catholic seniors got a chance to rock their cap and gown, but it wasn't the way they imagined it four years ago when they started this journey. And then you put this on. Putting on cords and adjusting a graduation cap is more than just a rite of passage to senior David Gepatulin. Especially at Rona Catholic, we have a lot of senior traditions that I've always been excited for. And the choir that I've been in, we have a really strong senior tradition there too. And so even since I've been little, I've been really excited to do a lot of these. And of course, I was really disappointed. He's not the only one who's experiencing disappointment. So faculty decided to get students and their families together to still take that honorable walk. Congratulations. Thank you receive their diploma, write a chalk message, and throw a celebratory streamer. This is perfect. At a normal graduation, everyone gets like their like split second, like right when they get their diploma. But here, like it's all about you. It's about the students and helping them make a great memory, but also including the parents like never before. Then a photo to celebrate their future and the meaningful journey that got them there. Yeah! Students have come with everything from sweatshirts of their colleges that they'll be attending or posters of the MMA, uh, matches they hope to participate in someday. And actually yesterday we had a student bring her family pet, a dog. And no, it's not traditional, but it's a reminder of how remarkable the class of 2020 truly is. Yeah! <laughs> Congrats again to David and all of the class of 2020. Now, a mother of one of the other students is a photographer, and she took photos, and that, along with videos, will be put together for a virtual commencement in June. Live in the newsroom, Megan Woods, 10 News, working for you.